So today we saw Tesla stock close up 2% higher from the close of yesterday. With some major news of Tesla resuming the talks to build a gigafactory in India. In fact, the Times of India cited government sources saying Tesla has started negotiations with the Indian government to build a factory with an annual capacity of 500,000 electric vehicles. However, although this is good news and a positive catalyst for Tesla stock, I don't believe this is the underlying reason why we saw Tesla stock move up today. In fact, if we take a look at the NASDAQ index ETF QQQ, we see a similar pattern. Now, in yesterday's video, I talked about how we were having the PPI report come out today. And in fact, when we take a look at the data, we saw that the PPI came in the lowest amount in the last three years, along with jobless claims coming in lower. And so this is pretty much the reason why the overall markets ended up trending up higher. Because when you come to think about it, the leading indicator for future inflation, right, obviously, the PPI report is what I'm referring to came in softer than expected along with the fact that initial claims has come in softer and come in lower, right? Well, this is good because that means that individuals, right, are filing less for unemployment, still showing signs of a robust job market while at the same time showing us that inflation is still cooling off, which is obviously good. It just kind of gives us the picture that, or the narrative that the soft landing is actually something that could be possible to happen. But along with that news, today we also got an update that St. Louis Fed President James Bullard is actually resigning from the Federal Reserve. Now this is pretty interesting because he was one of the most hawkish members of the Federal Reserve. Now I do want to point out the fact that, you know, for the year of 2023, he was part of the non-voting district, meaning he did not have a say for the FOMC meetings on whether or not we should hike rates for the year of 2023, but he did have a say in 2022 and he in fact was one of the most hawkish members now i also do want to point out that going forward for 2024 he would not have had a voting right for the fomc and in fact he wouldn't be able to vote until 2025 however at the end of the day Again, it doesn't really matter because he's resigning. And so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what type of member gets, you know, obviously this new position in the Federal Reserve. Are we going to have someone just as hawkish or are we going to have someone pretty dovish replace James Bullard? But now that we got through a lot of the news from today, I want to go ahead and highlight something to you guys that I found in particularly unusual and pretty interesting as well. For example, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi in the recent years has been notorious for making amazing trades trades and many have called her out for doing inside trading because she has the insight of what policymakers are doing thus giving her an advantage for her trades and if we take a look we see that recently just about a month ago she actually purchased more shares of Apple and Microsoft now I know this isn't Tesla stock per se but it's pretty interesting that we're seeing Nancy Pelosi put a significant amount of money into Apple and Microsoft showing that she's possibly more optimistic going forward. I mean, again, Nancy Pelosi is probably one of the best traders of all time, regardless if she's doing it with insider trading. And so, you know, just looking at this alternative data, I think it's kind of interesting and also unusual at the same time. And this is something that I like to keep an eye out for. But with that being said, guys, I want to go ahead and hop into my laptop and talk about Tesla stock in more details, both from the perspective of a long term investor, but also from the perspective of a short term trader, right? But before we do so, I do want to also provide a friendly reminder for those of you guys to check out the links in the description below because the first link is going to be a link for the push and profit private group where you guys will get access to my daily briefings where every single day I update what is currently going on in the overall market along with providing some trade ideas but i also want to highlight that there is actually a second link in the description below where you guys have access to my free newsletter where every single week i give you guys an update on things that you absolutely want to pay attention to for the overall market so with that said definitely consider checking out that link signing up with your email so you guys are updated but let's go ahead and hop into my laptop alrighty so we are officially in my laptop taking a look at Tesla stock now earlier in the video I did already tell you guys that we had a pretty good day for Tesla as we closed 2% higher than the close from yesterday now obviously taking a look over here we did see that in the beginning of today's trading session we did kind of cool off for Tesla however midway through the day we did rally up and I mentioned that yeah the good news from you know the rumors of you know having a gigafactory in India you know it's definitely positive for Tesla 
But if we take a look at the overall markets, I mean, pretty much overall markets, uh, for example, the NASDAQ, the QQQ index ETF rallied. We take a look at, you know, SPY, um, which is the S&P 500, and we see that index obviously um, trended upwards. I'm talking about the SPY index ETF. So, you know, it wasn't something that was just, uh, you know, limited to Tesla. We saw this overall in the market, right? Now, in yesterday's uh, video, what did I mention? Well, I mentioned that obviously we wanted to pay attention to the PPI report that was coming out today but I also highlighted that we have a significant event coming out tomorrow right so I want to go ahead and just like touch on that one more time so tomorrow we have a lot of earnings for a lot of companies but one of the things I've highlighted is that we want to pay attention to the bank earnings like JP Morgan Wells Fargo uh, Citigroup BlackRock etc and of course you know going on to next week uh, Monday Tuesday Wednesday we also have a lot of bank earnings. Now, the reason I, I mentioned that we want to pay attention to these bank earnings is because it gives us a more clear um, idea of how the economy is overlook or, or actually looking. Because again, you know, the CPI report, the consumer price index, looked good. The PPI report uh, came in, looked good. We saw we still have a ro uh, robust job market, right? But we want to pay attention to the banks because on their earnings, they typically talk about loan defaults. And one of the main concerns are, are you know, individuals and businesses struggling to pay off their debts, right? Because obviously we know that interest rates are really high. We know that revolving credit is absolutely insane. So this is all a different tangent, but if you have any credit card debt, you want to pay that off immediately because this is not the time to rack up on credit card debt. It's just, I mean, there's no time, but today or this time is honestly the worst. But, you know, going back on topic, we also want to hear the quality of credit. Are banks having to get a little more, more tighter with credit because of the fact that people are defaulting? And so listening to these earnings are going to give us like a better picture of you know how the overall economy is going to be looking going forward but again another notable event that we're going to pay attention to where we absolutely want to pay attention to is probably the most notable if you're talking about tesla is going to be tesla's earnings right which is coming out july 19th now this is something that you know it did post on the community post for this channel so if you're not subscribed consider subscribing but i made a poll asking what do you guys think for tesla's earnings right so you know this is something that's you know very wildly debated because we know that tesla did do good on their deliveries but then on the bear side everyone's kind of saying well hey they had to cut their prices to stir up demand now I don't think that's necessarily a problem I think it's definitely an advantage that Tesla has where they have pricing power to go ahead and lower their cars uh, their prices and still be profitable to stir up demand away from the other competing legacy automakers that are you know entering into the EV market and so I think that this is still gonna be good for Tesla but of course I don't have a crystal ball, right? I know a lot of times, you know, I kind of make um, future predictions on, hey, I think this report's gonna come out like this and like that, like I did call out the CPI report. But when it comes to the earnings for Tesla, I honestly don't know, as I shouldn't know, right? <laughs> but, you know, obviously I'm gonna be data dependent. And so I wanna talk about my strategy for Tesla, uh, both in the long term and the short term. Now, I do want to provide this kind of like disclosure or this warning, and unfortunately, I do have to say this, um, you know, I say it all the time, but you guys don't want to just trade or invest based off anyone else's opinion, including my own. Even if you guys like what I say, you guys should only trade and invest in whatever you guys see value in, right? So if I say something and you see value in it, then go ahead, you know, go along with that trade. But don't just copy me just because you think uh, I'm going to be right, because I'm not always going to be right. And, you know, I have to admit to that. Right. But looking from a weekly time frame. Right. Let's look at the bull case. So if Tesla has a good earnings, well, from a technical perspective and a fundamental perspective, I want to touch on a couple of things from a fundamental perspective. That's going to be good because this is why investors put their money into companies. They want to make a return on investment, right? It's just as basic as that, you know, investors put or they pay a high multiple for a stock on the assumption that they're going to see revenue uh, increase and they're going to get a return on the money that they put in, right? And so if Tesla beats their earnings and Wall Street gets Tesla wrong, well, that's going to push Tesla upwards. Now, going to the technical side of things, this is why I have the chart over here. One of the things we want to pay attention to is where we're at currently. So we're at this level where there's very uh, medium amounts of volume by price. Now, I say this all the time on a channel. So if you're subscribed, please forgive me. But I do have to mention this that, you know, when there is a you know low level of volume by price, that's where we see the biggest movement in the stock. 
Why? Well, because there's less of a battle between the bid and the ask, right? Because if there's low levels of volume relative to price and there's a big strong uh, buying demand, well, that's going to push the stock upwards because it's going to push the order books upward, right? Now, if there's a lot of volume, there's a lot of people buying and selling, well, that's where we're going to see consolidation, right? For example, we see the biggest area of uh, volume by price is around over here. Where do we see the most consolidation where we move sideways? Over here. Where do we see the least amount of volume by price? Well, we see that over here. What happened over here? Well, we had strong buying pressures, and so Tesla pushed up. And so we're at these levels where we're at medium levels, right? But a little bit above, we get back to those low levels of volume relative to price. And so if we kind of just uh, move to the left over here, when there was strong buying, to, or, you know, buying pressures relative to low volume by price, Tesla moved up. But when there's, you know, selling pressure around this area, Tesla falls down and we see those big moves. So the catalyst of, or really just the fundamentals of Tesla having a good earnings puts us back at these levels where we could pretty much jump back up to the 370s. That wouldn't be unreasonable to see us hit those levels, especially if Tesla still performs fundamentally well and we're still seeing strong indications in the economy, right? Now, you know, going to the bear side, right, of things, we have to look at things from two perspectives. You know, I, I can't be a perma bull and a perma bear, right? I am bullish on Tesla in the long term, but I, I don't really subscribe to the individuals who are going to be bullish no matter what, right? Now, if you're an investor and you're long term and you believe Tesla, cool. Right. But you also have to be aware that, you know, things just don't always go up and there's several factors that could influence the stock going down. And so this is why I like taking a look at the perspective from the bear side. So if Tesla underperforms. Right. And we see that, hey, revenue is going down. Uh, free cash flow is bad. Um, they have um, their uh, margins. Right. Uh, for uh, Profit margins all diminish as well. Well, that's not going to be good. Right. And so we could possibly see Tesla fall down. But luckily around this area. It could fall down where there's a lot of volume by price. And so that could keep us at around these levels right over here, 182. And, you know, this is because we see that there's a strong area of support around here. We see that it was an area of support in the past. Um, and then we kind of see it as an area of resistance in the past as well. So this is kind of like a, a net right now. Of course, it doesn't mean that Tesla can't fall below it, because when it comes to looking at things from a technical perspective, you know, stocks don't have to adhere to whatever is on the chart. You know, you see people drawing a bunch of squiggly lines on the charts with their trend lines and etc. They're moving averages. And that stuff does have some utility. It does work. But at the same time, the stock market, right, it doesn't really adhere to whatever you draw. You know, there's several factors that, that influence the price of the stock. And I put much more weight into the fundamentals. And so, you know, if we have a bad earnings, well, I want to pay attention to where we're going to be at and see if we hold up around here. Now, if we do see Tesla stock fall down and hold up around here, start consolidating and then show confirmation of an uptrend. Well, guess what I'm going to do around this area if that's the bear case, right? I'm going to add more to my long term portfolio, right? You know, one of the things I've said on this channel before is that if so far in 2023, it's been hard to <laughs> honestly add more to Tesla, right? Because I kept saying I'm waiting for a dip so I could add more. I like buying when there's a dip and then confirmation of an uptrend. Now, we did have that over here and we did have that over here, right? But did I end up buying Tesla at, at those times? No, right? Now, why didn't I? It's not because I didn't see the opportunity. Uh, I'm not. I don't. I'm, I'm not made of infinite cash, right? So sometimes, you know, I already invest in index funds for the month, and I just don't have any capital left to to put into like other individual stocks like Tesla. So you know, sometimes you're gonna miss out on opportunities. That's what happened to me. And then pretty much Tesla kept going up, which is fine because uh, you know it's in my long term portfolio, right? But if we do see Tesla come down, well, you know, I do this time have cash set aside where hey, I'm looking to deploy capital for Tesla if we do dip down and show confirmation of an uptrend now from a short-term trading account um even if tesla does start coming down i say this often and i i do uh, kind of repeat myself but i don't plan on shorting tesla even as we come down even if it's a strong movement down simply because tesla has so many catalyst events lined up that I, I find it dangerous to short Tesla, right? Especially we have the Cybertruck coming out um, pretty soon. And I think that's going to be something that's going to be pretty bullish for Tesla. But also Tesla is one of the most shorted mega caps out there, right? Now, not saying that's going to be a short squeeze, but it is something that can have a little minimal effect of kind of a push up where, 
you know, if Tesla's going down and then we have bullish news, well, the short sellers are piling on and then Tesla starts going up, the short sellers are going to have to cover and that's going to spike Tesla upwards. So, so far, you know, I haven't been shorting Tesla even in my short term trading account where I trade the fluctuations in price. Not saying that you guys can't, right? For example, this day over here, let's go ahead and go to like a four hour chart. This day over here, if you guys watched the previous video, I talked about how the net, it was around here on the 7th. I talked about how on the 8th is much likely that Tesla stock was going to fall down. Now, I was right on that um, idea that Tesla did fall down, but did I trade that? myself personally no why because even in my short-term trading account as i said i don't plan on shorting tesla now again you guys don't have to copy me and if you guys saw value and you guys uh believe that you know based on, i'm not going to repeat everything i said from that video but if you guys saw what i said and you guys wanted to take advantage of that opportunity by all means but me personally i don't plan on uh, you know shorting tesla even if we have these big movements down in a day right just not what i'm looking to do again you guys feel free to do whatever you guys see value in but with that being said guys let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on tesla for the earnings with that being said uh it looks like it's storming and my power is going out so i'll see you guys on that next video and i'll keep this video very short take care